It's time. This is Dr. John Brimhall here with Dr. Joshua Burka, a naturopath from Los, the uh, California area and also a licensed acupuncturist. We're excited to have him here. He's a consultant for Beamer as well as has a private practice. So I'm going to ask Dr. Burka to introduce himself a little bit better than that, give us a little bit of his history and have him tell us what he's doing right now and uh, to let all of you know that he's going to be one of our major speakers at Homecoming 2016, the last three days of January, and uh, he will be speaking on microcirculation at that time on the Beamer therapy. Uh, Dr. Burke, take over. Thank you very much, Dr. Brimhall. I'm excited to be here and even more excited for the upcoming uh, homecoming event in January of 2016. A little bit about myself, I'm a naturopathic physician, triple board certified in naturopathic medicine, acupuncture, and Chinese medicine. Uh, basically, I have more of a functional medicine practice. I do a lot of pain management, musculoskeletal work. Uh, I've been working with cold laser therapy for years and took a special interest in biophysics, uh, looking at photobiology, photochemistry, and it led me into looking at pulsed electromagnetic field technology. So uh, I'm currently in Carlsbad, California, and just got back practicing in an integrative medical center in Abu Dhabi. So excited to be back and uh, sharing this technology with the listeners out there. So I would like to begin here. I want to welcome you all. And uh, I want to first thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to be here. And over the next hour, we're going to explore a unique therapeutic modality. Uh, it uses a pulsed electromagnetic technology. And this PEMF helps to support the health and well-being of your patients, both within a clinical setting as well as a home health care setting. You know, we live in very interesting times. Uh, despite all the technologies and medical advancements, we're still faced with both acute and chronic disease patterns, and these are rampant throughout our society. And at the same time, we're at a junction, we're at a paradigm shift, and it's imminent. And you're here today, and you're going to hear about this innovative therapeutic device called Beamer. And it's revolutionizing the way that we take care of our bodies, both in sickness and in health. I do have to cover this. Uh, this is a disclaimer here. Beamer products are in no way a substitute for professional medical care. There are no medical claims being made from these products. Statements made, uh, they haven't been evaluated by the FDA or government agencies, and they're not intended to diagnose, treat, and or cure any medical conditions or diseases. You should always consult with your physician or primary health care provider if you have any medical concerns. Beamer products are wellness and fitness systems. Uh, Beamer is a class one FDA registered medical device, soon to be class two. Uh, there's current submission for a 510K as we speak. All information presented in this webinar is for educational purposes only. So while Beamer does use a pulsed electromagnetic field as a carrier wave for delivering its patented waveform, the field itself is not the sole substance that elicits the complex physiological effects. Um, in fact, Beamer chose to use a pulsed electromagnetic field because of the deep penetrance and the overall safety of using a PMF. It's important to know Beamer is an acronym is an acronym for Bioelectromagnetic Energy Regulation. And again, it is a registered as a class one medical device. Speaking of energy, I want to talk a little bit about this. Energy describes the amount of work that can be performed by a force. Energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed. So the question is then, what about a force? What are the forces? And there's four known forces, gravity, weak and strong force. And what we're going to be spending some time on is talking about the electromagnetic force. Electromagnetism pervades all of life existence. And when we look at the electromagnetic force, it's organized into something called the electromagnetic spectrum. Many of the listeners out there are very familiar with photobiology, photochemistry within the visible or infrared light spectrum using laser or LED systems. And the electromagnetic spectrum categorizes a huge variety of electromagnetic forces. Uh, they're variable in wavelength and frequency, and they range from wavelengths from a fraction of the size of an atom 
all the way to wavelengths miles long. And in fact, when we talk about the lengths of waves, we're, waves that we're exposed to with low intensity PMS like Beamer, these would be way out here with the reference range uh, on the left side of the slide here. So take a look at this static magnet uh, or a magnet at rest. This static magnet has two poles, north and south, positive and negative. Uh, this image depicts a static magnet with iron filings and the static magnetic field. Now when we look at the right side, we can see a wire that's conducting electricity from the bottom to the top and the subsequent field generated from the flow of electrons as indicated in the encircled eye for induction uh, with a directional arrow pointing up. When electrons flow through this pathway, by the right hand rule, it creates a field. And when we're talking about Beamer, we're looking about a field, a field generated from conductive coils within either a full body applicator and or spot applications. The Earth, its magnetic field is very much like a static magnet, however it's different in that it's dynamic, it's changing. The Earth's geomagnetic field is generated by convection currents from the Earth's core. And these magnetic fields extend several tens of thousand miles into space. All living species, humans, animals, we've all evolved in the presence of this magnetic field, so much so that we're greatly influenced by even minor fluctuations in geomagnetic activity. So the question is, how does this relate to you? How does this relate to me? And how do magnetic fields relate to life? How does this relate to our bodies? One of the most important qualities of electromagnetic waves uh, when we apply them to our bodies is that they impart an electrical charge to the substances that they pass through. And this is a particularly important in regards to tissue salts or ions of the body as it causes an increase in cellular metabolism of these substances. Uh, the same is true, for example, when we look at, uh, for instance, bone and piezoelectricity or myofascial tissue in regards to how electrons or photons bump and move through these dipoles. So the optimal function of our bodies is dependent upon electromagnetism. Not only have we evolved with the geomagnetic field of the Earth, the technology of pulsed electromagnetic field has also evolved as it relates to science and medicine over the past 50, 60 years. In fact, one of the first approvals in the United States for using pulsed electromagnetic fields was back in 1979 for non-union fractures. And we've come a long way since then. NASA, for example, has been researching ways to maintain healthy physiology uh, for its astronauts who have gone to space and returned with ill effects. And some of these ill effects can take weeks, months, or even years to recover from. NASA has especially been interested in using PMF as countermeasures for muscle and bone atrophy, as you can see in this particular study here. For those of you who aren't aware, I'd like to share an announcement with you. While Beamer has been working to develop a relationship with NASA for the past three years, it's been since February of 2015 this year that the Space Act agreement was signed between Beamer and NASA. As part of a research and development project, NASA has chosen Beamer as a corporate partner for the development of undergarments or new spacesuits at Johnson Space Center in Houston. And this joint venture is really paving the way for the integration of Beamer technology into manned spaceflight, as well as exit preparation and re-entry uh, treatments for regenerative processes. So it's not just any pulse electromagnetic field therapy device that works to elicit desired physiological effects, such as those sought out by the NASA scientists. There's some very important parameters that involve wave shape or the waveform that's used, uh, the intensity or flux density of the field, and the frequency. 
Beamer's patented waveform is the most researched and scientifically studied PEMF application available today. And again, all PEMF devices are not created equal. First and foremost, because the type of the waveform that is used truly matters. And it's the spectrum of frequencies and timely variations of the electromagnetic field that interact with our cells to give rise to these desired physiological effects. This is the technology that's the basis of the Beamer signal, which was created in 1998. And it's really been evolving ever since uh, with research and development, with the newest signal configuration introduced into the international market in 2010, 2011. As you can see here, this is the mathematical formulation that gives rise to the Beamer signal. What you see here is an example of the difference way of the difference of the wave patterns which have been utilized by traditional PMF devices, for instance, sinusoidal wave, trapezoid, triangular, sawtooth. And these are, they can be effective. However, their pulses only reach a certain segment of cell frequencies. Notice when we look at the complex multidimensional sinusoidal wave on the right hand side of the Beamer wave pattern. This patented wave reaches millions of cells within the body. And in addition to the signal and waveform, the Beamer has a unique electromagnetic field distribution, which enables this device to affect multiple cellular processes simultaneously. Um, while the Beamer exhibits multiple effects, the uh, Beamer pulse electromagnetic field has a very profound effect on hemodynamics, how blood moves. In fact, in Europe, it's known as Beamer physical vascular therapy, and it's used widely by both clinicians as well as within the home healthcare sector. And if you want more information on European applications, you can review them at the Beamer Group, the international website. And for any studies that I'm not including involving hemodynamics, and there are quite a few, which I'm unfortunately not able to discuss today because of the process with the 510K and FDA, please go to uh, pubmed.gov uh, and go ahead and punch in Beamer Vascular Therapy and uh, you can find uh, a lot of good articles there related. So the Beamer's waveform was first studied by a research doctor by the name of Rainer Klopp. And Dr. Klopp is the, was the head of the Berlin Institute of Microcirculation, which was founded back in 1992. It was one of the leading figures in the field of microcirculation today. Uh, this gentleman has been a leader in the field for decades with an array of scientific and medical research, as well as recipient of multiple scientific awards. Uh, Dr. Klopp and the Institute of Microcirculation was conducted world-renowned microcirculation research in the field of biophysics, um, cardiology, angiology, oncology, uh, internal medicine, as well as dermatology. And in the 90s, Dr. Klopp was actually commissioned by the International Society of Geriatrics to find non-invasive, non-drug alternatives to assist geriatrics with chronic conditions, which would ultimately reduce their need for pharmaceutical medications and, in turn, Cut the, cut the checks that the German government was writing out for late care for geriatric patients. There are multiple devices out there. And again, I want to be very clear, these are not all created equal. Uh, when I asked to compare Beamer with other devices, there really is no comparison. The unique um, complex sinusoidal wave used by the Beamer and the manner in which it's delivered is protected by five international patents. And there's no device on the market that has a similar effect. Uh, here's a study that was published looking at the changes in partial pressure of oxygen. There are various uh, six different PMF devices and their effect and change on change of PO2. And Beamer here is represented by product A, and you can see that Beamer performed above and beyond all other devices tested. I want to talk to you about how this works as far as supporting hemodynamics from the perspective of mechanism of action. A lot of times when we speak of mechanism of action, the body. Well, with Beamer, the pulse electromagnetic field is delivering a waveform to the body which actually interfaces with 
tissues, and in particularly microcirculatory tissues, as you see here, arterioles and venules. It uses two different frequencies, 10 and 30 hertz. The 10 hertz has a direct effect on the nerval control of the blood vessel, and the 30 hertz triggers production of nitric oxide. And as we all know, NO is a potent vasodilator. So let's start with why Beamer did this. Why did they look at this? Why did they look at this technology in the first place? Before we're sick or ill, as we all see as clinicians, we develop symptoms. And regardless of the symptom as a physician, I'm always looking for the cause. A lot of times I find microcirculatory or circulatory dysfunction as one of the underlying issues. This leads to decreased oxygen or hypoxia and therefore low energy states within the cells. These energy deficits ultimately cause dysfunction at a cellular level, disrupting cellular metabolism, affecting bioenergetics or decreasing the effectiveness or ATP deficiency, as well as dysfunction at cellular organ and tissue levels, ultimately coming back to symptomatic expression. But the causes of many, if not all, chronic disease really can be laid out here. How we move, how we groove through the world, lack of regular exercise, how we breathe, psychological, environmental stress, poor eating habits, SAD is standard American diet, and what's the common factor here? Ultimately, poor circulation and oxygen availability, which leads to disrupted bioenergetics. When we look at bioenergetics, it's the study of energy flow through living systems. That means how we take in energy, transform it into a usable form for our body to use, and when we have poor blood flow, uh, low oxygen levels, hypoxia, we have low energy. And this ultimately is a recipe for disease. When we look at our local environment, that's our body and its surroundings, there's an important relationship for many of you who are very clear on this, especially working with the musculoskeletal system, between structure and function, and both are in place to maintain health and prevent disease. Ultimately, we've been taught that biochemistry is the mechanism by which physiology can be completely understood, and therefore, it's become the fundamental basis of medicine today. But when we really look at Moving beyond this mechanistic, closed system, lock and key model of biochemistry, it's important to understand that the world exists beyond just chemicals and just molecules that we as clinicians, really very few of us study and even less, of a, less put into practice. So biophysical influences affect all of life and they guide all biochemical reactions and interactions in the body. And what this means is that electromagnetic energy, including electricity, light, electromagnetic fields, and even the geomagnetic field of our Earth, affects biological functionality. And ultimately, it's energy that's the puzzle piece that links both structure and function, and in particularly bioenergetics. So there is a direct effect between energy and function, and one of the most important aspects of maintaining proper energy production is through maintaining the regenerative aspects of health. Regeneration is key, and I don't care whether we're talking about sports or performance, illness, disease prevention, the rehabilitation, or simply just recovering from day-to-day -day life. Our ability to regenerate seems to decrease over time or as we age, but it doesn't have to. There are things we can do from perspective of lifestyle that can, well, maybe not prevent death, but can support life. And it's really the triad of this inflammation, glycation, and oxidation that leads to these degenerative processes within us. And as it relates to oxidation, it's these reactive oxygen species, they really act as a double-edged sword. Our mitochondria, they're both generators 
of as well as targets for reactive oxygen species. They generate ROS from a number of different redox centers in the respiratory chain and other metabolic pathways. A majority of free radicals are generated inside of the cell rather than being generated from the environment. We think so much that all these toxins from the outside are coming in, but we produce a lot of ROS on our own. And the oxidative stress is directly linked to mitochondrial dysfunction. Overproduction of re uh, reactive oxygen species and exposure to free radicals really can be detrimental to our cells, and in particular, creating mitochondrial dysfunction. And this is exactly why it's essential to consume foods that are rich in antioxidants. Uh, and when you can't, it's advantageous to supplement accordingly. And that includes the use of supplementing and using systems like Beamer to support the body and support our antioxidant capacity. I want to bring up a study here that was published back in 03, uh, looking at Beamer. The study looked at the effects of Beamer on mature erythrocytes or uh, red blood cells and the application of Beamer was over a three-week period and it clearly showed the reduction of oxidative stress in the red blood cells. And this was documented by measuring a decrease in lipid peroxidation levels as well as an increase in glutathione redux reductase. Subsequently, you can see here a 10% increase in reduced glutathione. What does that mean? What does this mean to you? What does this mean to our patients? Anytime you can get more antioxidant protection, the better detoxification your body can handle and the more functional it becomes. We're only as healthy as what we can eliminate. Here's another study that was published in 2009 in the Journal of Complementary and Alternative Medicine. This was done on 37 test subjects. Treatments were done for eight minutes, twice a day for 12 weeks. And the results conclusively revealed that using the Beamer decreases the fatigue related with multiple sclerosis. In fact, this particular study uh, was a double-blind placebo-controlled study. After the first part of the study, it became an open-label trial where those who were in the sham group or the placebo group were allowed to come in and continue uh, using Beamer as both a uh, safe, showing it was a safe as well as an effective adjunct of treatment for MS-related fatigue. This study is available on PubMed if you want to look at it. Another study that we're looking at here is on red blood cell metabolism, uh, hemoglobin oxygen affinity. Most important here to look at is the increase in ATP, adenosine triphosphate, of 18%. And we look at Beamer and how does Beamer support bioenergetics? How does Beamer support mitochondrial function? Well, it does so both directly as well as indirectly by supporting functional hemodynamics, blood flow, microcirculation, and vasomotion. I want to briefly jump into a clinical case here of mine. Uh, this is basically Bell's palsy induced surgery. This is a 46 year old female patient of mine had a parotid tumor on the right side of her face removed. I tell you folks, I, I've been seeing a lot more tumors around the head, neck, face, especially parotid gland. And all I can think of is, you know, we have positive effects that can be utilized depending on the information delivered through electromagnetic fields. But uh, these cell phones that we're utilizing are absolutely having detrimental effects on our body. And uh, unfortunately, it's taking too long for our regulating bodies to bring that to the attention of the general population. Anyway, coming uh, to this individual, this 46-year-old female, a patient of mine came to my office about four weeks after the surgery. And you can see here, what I asked her to do is smile. And you can see she has complete paralysis, uh, facial paralysis on the right side. Also, the scar, this is a uh, Mexican-American woman, and uh, as many of you know, they have a tendency to keloid. Uh, the scar was looking very bad. She was in the cosmetic industry, still is, and uh, came to me crying, saying how she can't function, uh, psychologically depressed, she can't see her clients, and it was really a kind of a sad situation. What I did is I sent her home with a Beamer, the full system, uh, the light, the spot applicator, as well as the full body mat and the control panel. 
This picture here, I asked her to close her eyes and I realized she had no functionality to close her eye. And, and I asked her, you know, how, how are you sleeping? And that's when she really broke down and she hadn't been sleeping at all. She's been using eye drops, her eyes were getting dry and really a tough situation. So again, this is an iatrogenic uh, cause of facial paralysis through uh, surgery post parotid tumor removal. So taking a look at this, this is only after a couple weeks, uh, four weeks rather, before and after and you can see that the keloid has uh, kind of faded away and the scar is starting to go away. This is only after one month, daily application, eight minutes a day, utilizing the Beamer full body, the applicator over the region of the right side of the face as well as the light right over the incision. But this is more important. After four weeks, uh, this dear patient was completely. This is I asked her to smile for this picture, yeah. picture and uh, there's still a little bit on the right side, but uh, using Beamer in clinical practice truly changes people's lives. And you'll see that in very short applications. It doesn't take a uh, long time for effects to take place, and uh, many patients can feel and or you can see clinical results very quickly. We have to learn to do the light one for the face. Mm -hmm. uh, I am hearing some background noise. I don't know if you're, uh, you're not muted, but this I just want to bring up. This is a, real, uh, a study looking at insomnia and the risk of acute myocardial infarction on sleep. People who have insomnia or don't sleep well, it's clear that they have more incidence of heart disease. Maybe for many of you that's not surprising, but the correlation is pretty stunning. And when we look at the circadian rhythms of the body and how important they are, Beamer recognizes this as well. And with their latest uh, Beamer Pro and Classic model, this includes a sleep cycle or a, uh, sleep program. During our day or active phase, a lot of blood flow and neurological activity is within our muscle, brain, digestive system. And of course, during our sleep or regenerative phase, these go into the internal organs, liver, kidney, spleen, for the process of regeneration and detoxification. The Beamer sleep cycle basically is on for two hours at night when you fall asleep and then it shuts off and then it is on for two hours when you wake up depending on the length of time that you're utilizing the application. So you sleep six hours, seven hours, eight hours, it remains the same. It uses a low intensity level two which equals seven micro tesla. Instead of using the combination of 10 and 30 hertz, it only uses the 10 hertz. 10 hertz is also synonymous with a brain wave of alpha that is emitted. So think about this with your patients with insomnia or difficulty sleeping. Sometimes I will even use this for uh, my elite athletes for visualization exercises uh, before tournaments or training. Okay, this is another case, a patient of mine, 39-year-old male, is a Gulf War veteran. Um, this looks really nice, actually. We're looking at a sacrum here. Uh, this individual slowly began degenerating and then quickly degenerated uh, neurologically after he got back from the Gulf. And this is from sitting in a wheelchair. These are bed sores uh, rubbing on the feet, as well as this particular one where he was rubbing on the wheelchair. And I want to go back to this so you can clearly see it. This has already been debrided with medical maggots. Um, the Veterans Affairs office wouldn't touch him here and um, it was a really bad situation. So I, I debrided the entire wound. You can see these holes. These are not single isolated lesions. These are all connected or tunneled underneath. Uh, it was a pretty intense uh, situation here. As you can see here on the leg, you can see the necrosis through, and I'm going to move the arrow here so you can see, right in the center here, necrotic tissue and around, you can see the dark color 
uh, as we know, is stasis dermatitis. So there's definitely a threat here uh, on chemodynamics or blood flow. Dr. Burke, let me interject here. You and I are the only ones supposed to be hot. Somebody is leaking through. Would you everybody go up on your computer or your phone and mute it? I don't know how we're getting somebody, but we hear a woman's voice with somebody laughing in the background. Would you please all mute yourself so we can hear this clear detail? Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, so full circle, returning to this, working with uh, these sacral ulcers and as well as this lesion on the leg, This is what it looked like after six weeks. And this was daily application, two to three times a day using the full body. In this situation, he was only able to use the full body on the bed for transfers and basically set up the B pad directly integrated into his wheelchair. He used the B pad for the low back as well as the B sit. And his wife was doing applications uh, with the light as well. The Beamer uh, comes with an LED, 660 nanometer LED system which is uh, utilizing the frequency of 30 hertz. And it's very, very good for support of superficial conditions. Again, this is before and after with only a month and a half, six weeks. Uh, it may sound like a long time, but uh, these particular situations uh, can sometimes last months and are very susceptible to infection. So this was a great case outcome. Uh, you can see the leg as well, the stasis dermatitis. Let me move uh, here so you can clearly see it. Uh, almost gone, very pink, healthy tissue. Uh, the necrotic tissue, as you see from here, is uh, virtually disappeared. Now this is not an infection like Pseudomonas or something. The uh, wife was utilizing a uh, curcuma or turmeric, like a poultice, and she was doing this maybe once a week, and so this is the remnants from that, from this image. Again, this is the after six week of application of Beamer. I want to talk to you about um, a study that was done, uh, it was called the Beamer User Study, and there were 157 subjects that were used in this study and looking at overall functionality from quality of life to musculoskeletal symptoms, cardiovascular, nerve pain, uh, vascular uh, disease. And you can see here the various inclusions, exclusions, over 70% total improvement in six weeks of use. And this is the really interesting thing that you'll find with your patients. So many doctors ask me, so what's the protocol? What do I use for this? What do I use for that? And it's really quite simple. You use the same application for each individual. What you have control of as the individual user and or the clinician using this is, as far as dosage or dosometry is the intensity or flux density. So that means the power and the time exposed to that flux. Uh, in general, applications are eight minutes long on the full body applicator and effects take place in two to six minutes and can remain six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 hours depending on the metabolic health of that individual. This is a uh, looking at the success rate of Beamer treatment and this was subject to the duration of continuous treatment, meaning this was twice a day, ongoing for a, a eight week period. And you can see here free of complaints from start in the orange, uh, we'll move here, uh, increased over, I'm sorry, this was a six week period. And improvements also. Now here's an interesting aspect. When you look at after the four week period, the improvements kind of decreased and this is pretty much uh, precisely what I see in practice is after four to six weeks, uh, the improvements, people really tend to uh, get the improvement and maintain that and then they start noticing, well I use this for my shoulder but my hands are starting to improve or I was very fatigued and I used it for supporting with overall wellness and health and now my knee starts to feel better. And it's very common to see this in practice. Um, I've worked with hundreds of users and have spoke with thousands over the past eight years of consulting with Beamer. And I find very few people who don't have any effect with the use and application of Beamer.
So I know many clinicians out there, uh, physicians, doctors, healthcare providers, uh, people come to you, but you know, what I'm always trying to do is help people understand and help people remember about their own internal doctor, that functionality between mind and body. You know, when we stimulate our body, the blood flow, the hemodynamics, it supports the body's detoxification. It helps support the functioning regulatory mechanisms with our body and ultimately supports energy production, energy distribution, energy regulation, which all inclusively is mitochondrial function and bioenergetics. And this supports our internal doctor. In fact, there's some studies that have come out recently as of last year really looking at the importance of the mitochondria, especially crosstalk between mitochondrial DNA and nuclear DNA. But it doesn't stop there. The latest and greatest that I've been looking at is this crosstalk happening between the microbiome's DNA and nuclear and mitochondrial DNA. So a lot more to come as it relates to how we uh, are really involved within our own internal environment as well as our external relationship with environment. Beamer has a high level of acceptance worldwide. Physicians, therapists, universities, clinics, rehab centers. A lot of clinicians throughout the United States are just now uh, finding out about Beamer. This isn't something that's generally taught in medical schools. But as we progress in medicine beyond just the pill for every ill or the supplement here, we really need to bring in other modalities beyond our manual manipulative skills and uh, other modalities, lifestyle food, not just food we eat, but how we think, how we feel, how we process our environment has a direct effect with how we maintain structure and sustain function. Fact of the matter is movement is life and without movement, we don't live. I want to bring this point up uh, to also talk about uh, potential contraindications or relative contraindications for use with Beamer. The therapeutic use of Beamer technology is not for people who have had foreign organ transplants and who have been prescribed or are taking immunosuppressant drugs. And this is because Beamer has an effect on the immune system, supporting uh, increased function of the immune system. Persons also that are affected by unknown infectious disease, diseases or severe cardiac arrhythmias, psychoses, seizures that are not compensated, uh, they should consult their physician before beginning application with Beamer. Uh, this doesn't mean that everyone with arrhythmia or AFib, they need to talk with their doctor, but it is a good idea to make sure that there's no cross reactions happening with the medications. The only thing that I really look at with this that I've seen in the past uh, if someone is taking a blood thinner, such as warfarin, Coumadin, it's important that they are looking at their prothrombin time, their INR. Beamer has the tendency to restore balance, and when that happens, it can overthin the blood because uh, these blood thinners are working not in conjunction with the body, but really are working in a way that uh, inhibits the clotting uh, factors for the body. The Beamer therapy uh, therapeutically is an important supportive therapy adjunct for both clinicians, home users alike, and really it's not designed to replace the treatment of any doctor, physician, or therapist. Important to note. You know, Beamer is not something to just use when you're sick or ill, but rather it's a, connect, it's a preventative or prophylaxis. Now here's an excerpt from an ancient Chinese medical text, uh, the Huangdi Nei Jing, and as an acupuncturist, it's very important. To, this says maintaining order rather than correcting disorder is the ultimate principle of wisdom. To cure disease after it's appeared is like digging a well. Once one feels thirsty or forging weapons after the war has already begun, isn't this already too late? And the answer is absolutely. We have to move out of this reactionary type of uh, disease care model and move into what we all know as a healthcare model, supporting our daily activity through how we live, how we think, how we act. So I'd like to conclude uh, this webinar today. I wanna thank you. Uh, Beamer says for you, for life, for energy. I wanna thank you for your presence today. And if we do have time for some questions, uh, I would love to uh, have you moderate those for me.
Dr. Burka, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I am, sir. Okay, so here's a couple of questions that are coming in. How deep does Beamer penetrate the body? It's a great question. Uh, the depth of penetration of an electromagnetic field has to do with what we call flux density or intensity. Um, so many, there's so many devices on the market that have very high flux density or high intensities, and people believe you need uh, high powers to penetrate through the body. Beamer's maximum average flux density is 150 microtesla. Keep in mind the Earth's geomagnetic field is around uh, 50 microtesla, depending on where you are on the Earth. So even at a mid-range with one of the applicators, uh, level 5, uh, 50 microtesla is enough to penetrate even the largest human beings, and using higher levels will penetrate all the way to and through the body regardless. Uh, many people ask also, what if I have titanium screws or plates, or I have mesh, or uh, implants, deep brain stimulators, pacemakers? All of these are fine to use with Beamer, very different than with ultrasound or these other type of microcurrent or electrical therapeutics. Uh, how about uh, Beamer's use with heart after a MI? Good question. So after myocardial infarction, a lot of people would think to use the Beamer directly over the heart, but that's not the recommendation. The recommendation is to follow what's called the basic plan in the user manual. And this is a very gradual escalation of dosage as well as um, the intensity. So starting on level one, working up level two, level three, and so on. You can use this immediately after NMI, and there are four coils that are in the upper torso of the B body, which is the full body applicator, the mat, and they cover the upper torso, and there's two oblong or ovular coils that are on the distal regions of the legs. And these six coils are designed to stimulate a systemic effect on the body. And there's also spot applicators that are designed for individual regions or localized applications. As you can see in this image here, this is the B pad. It has three coils in it. This is the spot for a smaller application about the size of your palm. And the B light, which is the only one that does not use the pulsed electromagnetic field, although the red light is within the electromagnetic field spectrum, uh, it does not use the same type of technology as the B body, B pad, and the spot. There's also something called the B sit, which is a coil that is within a memory foam cushion, and this is great for travel or to use with uh, patients who are in ambulatory. Can Beamer be used on hereditary peripheral neuropathy? Beamer can be used virtually on anything. Uh, when I look at peripheral neuropathy, I'm, uh, I've am i never treated uh, something what I would call hereditary peripheral neuropathy. And when I just look at peripheral neuropathy in general, I look at uh, really mitochondrial dysfunction, and I look at uh, structural dysfunction. It can be of the membrane surrounding the nerve and or conduction of information moving through the nerve. When we're utilizing a technology like Beamer, not only does it support hemodynamics or blood flow, but it also has a direct inductive effect on nerve conduction and nerve function. So the applications for these particular uh, individuals would be utilizing the full body applicator and specialized application over these regions where the neuropathy is the most prevalent. Usually that's peripherally, hands, feet, and so on. And uh, one of my favorite and most uh, probably effective applicators to use is the one that you see here, the B pad. Now I'm also utilizing uh, functional medicine approaches, naturopathic approaches using uh, supplementation, pyridoxine, B6, B12, uh, precursors that help support neurological activity, alpha-lipoic acid, um, phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylserine, and uh, many of these combinations of supplements. One thing I did not mention, which is important, a lot of times when people are sick or chronically ill, their hemodynamics or microcirculatory system is not functioning very well. And therefore, it's difficult, I mean, ultimately the issue is getting the nutrients to the tissue. And so Beamer can help support the bioavailability of these nutraceuticals and or pharmaceuticals and help it drive to that target tissue, especially true for deeper structures such as joints. 
Would the Beamer product be my standalone treatment equipment in a neuropathy clinic? You know, not for me. Um, again, for people who are working with uh, neuropathy, there's different applications. For me, I think one of the highest level of functionality that you can use in neuropathy would be combination therapies using laser, uh, beamer, as well as possibly low-level microcurrent in addition to the appropriate lifestyle modifications and supplementation regime. What's the difference between class one and class two medical devices? So a class one medical device is something that is uh, registered. It's basically been shown to be safe. And from a perspective of class two, they look more at efficacy. What is this being used for? Uh, throughout Europe, there are nine indications that are used, uh, that are basically approved. In the United States, the classification is currently a class one, and there is a submission for a 510K for a class two. And really all that means is you can market, you can make claims on individual applications, and ultimately down the road, it's utilized in the uh, insurance reimbursement, CPT coding, and so on. Uh, will the be bring, Beamer bring back dead tissue to life? <clears throat> well, I don't know anything that brings back dead tissue to life unless there is a spark of life within that tissue. Uh, if apoptosis has already been triggered through the interface of uh, mitochondrial uh, communication through signal transduction or otherwise with the nucleus, then there's kind of no turn. It's the no turn point. But when we look at dysfunctional tissue that is the cell membrane potential, the uh, metabolic function has decreased to a certain level, uh, ideally apoptosis should occur. If it doesn't, there's some conjecture or discussion out there that this is one of the causes or the uh, initiators of carcinogenesis. So I wouldn't say that uh, Beamer brings anything back to life. Beamer does nothing more than support your body's own natural uh, energetic state by providing an activation energy to support functionality. When using the Beamer sleeping, can the mat be covered or would you sleep directly on it? So this is really good and this is one of my favorite things. I mean, when I'm working with lasers and photo by, uh, photochemistry and the different things, it's uh, very important to be in contact or at least to be working with that target tissue and not have a barrier in between to have that photochemical, photobiological stimulus or effect. Beamer actually will go through clothes. Beamer will go through a bed. Uh, for instance, on my treatment table, I have a Beamer underneath. I put a cloth over the top of it or a table paper and utilize it that way. On my personal bed for my sleep program where I sleep, I actually put a two inch thick um, memory foam topper on it and uh, utilize it right through. I don't like feeling things under me. And so this kind of takes away the sensation or feeling of a mat being under you and it has no effect on the field. The same is true for using a pillow under the head or if you're working with a knee, uh, you can certainly do that. In addition, Beamer works so well with other modalities utilizing it with laser, utilizing it with microcurrent, it's a great team player. And uh, again, it can be utilized uh, with implants, screws, titanium plates, and other type of uh, modalities also. Uh, where do we find research behind the, the, the Beamer? Beamer's been researched over 15 years. Publications can be found on pubmed.gov, and you can also um, I don't know how easy it's going to be from the United States, but to go to beamergroup.com, which is the international website, and uh, click English, and you can go ahead and look at uh, some of the studies that have been published uh, in a vast array from oncology to uh, hematology, as well as looking at hemodynamics, blood flow, looking at uh, bone regrowth, bone regeneration, sports. So there's a lot of research studies out there that can be found if uh, you just punch in Beamer vascular therapy uh, into PubMed. You can certainly look for that. Any research you're aware of or experience with Parkinson's disease? Yeah, you know, 
I haven't seen any published research from Beamer over the years, but I personally have worked with a lot of individuals with Parkinson's, and I started um, kind of using Beamer off-label in this way when I started looking and thinking about the effects of antioxidant production, especially glutathione. As you saw, Beamer uh, supports glutathione production in the body. Uh, I've had very good results with my Parkinson's patients, and uh, not to the point of reversing Parkinson's, but holding it steady from its progression, and that is a really difficult thing to do. I utilize the Beamer following the basic plan, starting low, working up slowly, and one of the tricks that I use to support mitochondrial um, function is utilizing this B-pad, as you see here, vertically up the spine. I will utilize one coil under the head and the other two coils down the spine, and using that after the B-body. This is one of the best ways to stimulate uh, mitochondrial activity. As we know, uh, more and more mitochondria are found in the nervous system than anywhere else in the body, only second uh, dairy, the heart, and then pancreas, and then liver. So this is a, a wonderful application or adjunct to any type of therapy that someone's working with with someone with Parkinson's. Um, you have any experience with the Beamer and food allergies and uh, dental implants? Well, interestingly enough, you know, I get a lot of questions. Uh, I'm one of the individuals who works with people for clinical usage application guidelines for both clinic and home health care. And I get the question a lot about acne and um, gastrointestinal dysfunction. And I always tell people you should really be, I mean, Beamer's great. Beamer's going to support your body's own self-regulatory -regulator mechanisms. Beamer's something that doesn't suppress inflammation. It actually accelerates the inflammatory process. And uh, those of you out there may disagree, but I believe it is impossible to move into the regenerative phase of healing without going through that inflammatory process. And so many of the drugs and therapies uh, from convention basically halt that process and put people into chronic states of pain and inflammation. Uh, it's not gonna change food allergies in essence. The only way to change that is uh, to one, identify to remove the obstacle to cure cause and ultimately rebuild the structure of the intestines as well as re-inoculate with probiotics and support with lifestyle modifications that move away from these inflammatory processes happening not just in the gastrointestinal system but systemically from potential food allergies. So again, I always identify uh, looking at IgG, IgE reactions and uh, remove these obstacles while I'm using this therapy to help with the recovery process. Dr. Berge, that sounds like the six steps to wellness we teach. That's exactly what we do. Amen. <laughs> One question I want to interject before we run out of time. Uh, we've had some patients with some pretty severe blood clots, and as I watch the, the Beamer in motion, which we didn't really show the blood studies that were done here tonight, but we've done it on previous times, how is it safe to use the microcirculation increase through Beamer wave and not affect blood clots negatively, but positively to help get rid of them. Yeah, Dr. Brimhall, that's a question that I actually just got three times today uh, from users. When we're looking at these microcirculatory, uh, these microcirculation videos called intravital microscopy, and unfortunately I wasn't able to show you those today, uh, but they are available. Uh, it's not hard to find them online if you just uh, go on and look on YouTube. Um, they're very readily available. These are looking at the size of literally the top of a pen, a cubic millimeter. So we're looking at very small caliber venules, arterioles, and yes, you are going to increase and support hemodynamics, microcirculation, vasomotion. Clots can slowly dissolve, but it's not a shearing force or a stress. It's not that kind of strength or energy from the flux of the beamer that's actually gonna break a clot free and cause an embolism or a stroke of, or something of that nature. Uh, in 15 years, there hasn't been a single case, Dr. Brimhall. Let's see. Yeah, the question. Just... Take the stress off of it. Uh, very good. Thank you. Questions just keep pouring in here, so I'll keep asking them as long as you want to keep answering them. Uh, Sounds good, Clark. Okay. With increased circulation, do patients experience any detox symptoms? Well, that can happen, and uh, it really depends on the the user and. You know, I kind of know what more and more seems to be better, and uh, especially men versus women, they always want higher. There's 10 levels on there. Why can't I just jump up to 8 or 9 or 10? 
kind of like when we get into a car. You don't just jump up and go 150 or 160 in the car, and it really depends on the metabolic state of the individual, whether I'll use a level 1 with someone or a level 3 with someone. It's really a clinical judgment call. So the basic plan that's outlined in the user manual really tries to start people one week using level 1, one week using level 2, and working up slowly. Start low and go slow. I coined that about four years ago with regard to the Beamer. And yes, you can get symptomatic expression, which is involved with, uh, I mean, very simple. If um, you are moving blood through the body and your detox organs are not at the capacity to be dealing with these mobilized toxins, then symptoms can develop. And that includes um, fatigue, that includes myalgias sometimes, itchiness, uh, lethargy, uh, so many different things depending on the individual. But the same thing is true, I would say. I mean, if you're used to maybe not walking or just maybe walking around the block and then you go out and decide you're going to go sprint or go out for a mile, yeah, you're going to have metabolic waste that is building up. And one of the things that I did not show you is one of the studies that uh, was on lactic acid production. As you increase the microcirculatory function or support hemodynamics in the body, Ultimately, you're clearing out this debris, including endogenous lactic acid. So the recovery process for athletes is key, and this is why many of my top athletes are using Beamer, not for performance and to get out there and say, oh, i got to use the Beamer and perform better, but recovery. You cannot perform unless you recovered. And as we get older, that becomes more difficult. If you're not sleeping, you're also not recovering. So Beamer is one of the quickest way to move metabolic waste out of the body. Is there any research using Beamer with persons having drug or alcohol abuse recovery? You know, we haven't done anything. And over the past uh, couple of years, I've had a lot of requests to this. Uh, there hasn't been anything published. I've certainly worked with individuals within my clinical practice, but uh, we haven't had any big centers or drug treatment rehabilitation centers using this. But it makes a lot of sense uh, when you're utilizing this, not just from the perspective of clearing the drug out of the body, but uh, what we didn't talk about is the Beamer signal and how it has an effect on regulating the autonomic tone, parasympathetic, sympathetic nervous system. This is one of the ways that it actually supports microvascular function through the 10 and 30 hertz nitric oxide and the nerval effect with the 10 hertz. So no, and we're very interested in these type of things if you are utilizing the Beamer or um, have used it in these cases and seen good results and would like to potentially do a longer term study, we'd be very interested in talking about that. What is the max intensity to use the B-pad on the head for eyes, ears, et cetera? So in general, there's not uh, a whole lot of guidelines for different parts of the body, but uh, I usually recommend not going over level five. I usually linger between levels one, two, three, program one. Program one is utilizing level two for two minutes, three for two minutes, and four for four minutes. And one of the reasons is I don't like to use a sledgehammer for something I can do with a little pick hammer. Uh, even at a level four, 40 micro Tesla, no plus signal on the head, uh, you're able to penetrate even the thickest skulls out there, and no pun intended there, but some people think they needed, uh, need such high powers or flux densities or intensities to penetrate. You don't. If the field is interfacing with the target tissue, the effect is occurring. So I general, there were studies done on diabetic retinopathy. I was using uh, level three, no plus signal, four minutes over the left temple, four minutes over the right temple uh, over a six to eight week period. So there's various applications of how to use it over the head, neck, face. Uh, generally, the lower levels are much more effective and uh, certainly safer. Dr. Berger, I think that's a great place to wrap things up. Very well. I want to thank you for having me. I uh, very much appreciate it. And again, I'm looking forward to uh, the up-and-coming uh, seminar that's going to be happening for homecoming in January 2016. Absolutely, and we're, we're going to have Jonathan Walker there, who is the expert on peripheral neuropathy, along with a medical doctor who's going to talk about hormones and weight loss. And so we just, we have a heck of a lineup there. You guys be sure and 